You just heard is some improvised chord melody over the changes to Satin Doll using exclusively the sixth and diminished harmonized scales associated with the late bebop pianist Barry Harris. Now personally it's a concept I picked up over the years transcribing some block chord solos by Wes Montgomery. Now I'm not saying that Wes necessarily learned it from Barry Harris or was thinking of it in those terms because as I will point out in this lesson there are other means to achieve the same effect. Regardless of what Wes was thinking if you analyze almost any of his chord melody solos you will notice that they are structured according to all of the same principles in the Barry Harris system. And don't just take my word for it before I teach it to you Here's a list of Wes Montgomery solos where you can clearly hear him using the so-called sixth and diminished concept. And in this lesson I would like to demonstrate the basics of this system as applied to comping and creating chord melody. So stick with me because I am going to show you in detail how each scale is formed, how to generate chord voicings from them, and to conclude a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use them to harmonize any melody. I'm Richie Zellen and I'm happy to welcome you to another info-filled lesson on the Jazz Guitar Channel. Let's get started. Each of these scales consists of a sixth chord arpeggio interspersed with those of a diminished seventh. And let's begin by examining the two principal scales in this system or what Barry Harris calls the major six diminished and the minor six diminished and they are the result of first horizontally laying out the four notes of each six chord and filling the alternate spaces between them with those of a diminished seventh. So here's a major six chord arpeggio. And here is what we end up with when we add the diminished seventh arpeggio. Note that it is simply a major scale with an added chromatic tone between the fifth and sixth. And this is what it sounds like. Now let's apply the same identical procedure to a minor 6 chord. Here are the four notes that make up its arpeggio. And to complete the scale all we have to do is add the diminished 7th arpeggio in between its notes. Note that in this case it is simply a melodic minor scale with an added chromatic tone again between the 5th and 6th. And this is what it sounds like. Next we want to use the notes in each scale to generate chords and this is achieved by diatonically stacking the intervals that make up each chord over their corresponding scale degrees. Here it is applied to both scales. Notice how each scale generates the four inversions for its sixth chord and its diminished seventh chord. The arrows denote the principle of tension and resolve which tonal music is based on. You know that the study of functional harmony teaches us that any chord can be preceded by a dominant which resolves a perfect fifth down to it. This effect continually takes place in the sequential application of these stacked chords. And that's because each diminished chord, which can be thought of as a rootless dominant 7 flat 9, always resolves to the upcoming sixth chord. Unfortunately, if we attempt to play these voicings on the guitar, we will soon realize that they are physically 
out of our reach. The solution then is to rearrange the notes in each voicing by dropping one of them down an octave. In this case, we've dropped each second note from the top. And now I'm going to play these drop two voicings on string groups one, two, three, four, and two, three, four, five. That is a combination of those two string groups. And I'm gonna do this in the key of D so we can fit everything into the main fretboard. So here we have the four major sixth chords. And here we have the four diminished chords. And you can see that it's really the same shape throughout because it's symmetrical. We put them together and it sounds like this. And here are the minor sixth and diminished drop two voicings. And here we have the four minor sixth shapes. And of course the uh, four diminished shapes are the same that we used over the uh, major sixth uh, scale. And again. putting them together. I believe the unique advantage of this system lies in viewing any chord, whether major, minor, or dominant, as a form of sixth chord when voiced leading between its surrounding diminished chords. That is because between each sixth and diminished chord, there are no repeated notes. And as a result, independent movement on all four voices of each chord is achieved when sequentially progressing from one to the other. To that effect, here are some charts to help you better understand how the chords derived from the major and minor sixth diminished scales can be rearranged to be used over other chord types. I'm going to play each one of these in a key that allows me to use an open string in the bass so you can better hear how each one of these chord sequences um, takes on a different uh, meaning uh, when played against a different root. So, There are two more eight note scales that Barry Harris teaches, which I won't go over in this video. However, they are included in the PDF download I will tell you about in brief. Next, I would like to talk briefly about the borrowing concept, which is part of this system, as well as show you how we can put all this info to use in creating some chord melody. Here we have the major six diminished, and you'll notice that for each chord there are two notes on the top voice. The first note is borrowed from the upcoming chord and then resolves back to the original. So here the major six chord borrows the upper note from the upcoming diminished chord, 
while the diminished chord borrows from the upcoming sixth chord, and so on. This is a way to create additional motion, and at the same time, it's a way to add some of the upper extensions to each chord. And this works with any of the six chord scales, but let me demonstrate it for now with the major six diminished scale. The concept of borrowing a note can be done not only with the top voice, but with any of the voices. In the PDF download, I also demonstrate how to do it in the second and third voices for the major six diminished and minor six diminished. I even show you how to mix them up and even borrow two voices at the same time. The download includes a 12-page PDF with regular notation and tab, including several charts and an explanation of the theory, the additional eight-note scales, and the chord melody arrangement we are going to learn next. You also get MP3s of all the examples, as well as band in a box and MIDI files that you can slow down and use to practice. This is all available for a very nominal contribution from jazzguitar.richiezellen.com forward slash premium and you'll find it in the mini courses section. So next I want to teach you a procedure to create chord melody using this system. And to better illustrate the process I'm going to use Beethoven's Ode to Joy which is a simple melody everyone is familiar with. Let's take the melody to Ode to Joy. In the beginning we have So here we have, over the G, a 3, so we would harmonize that with the major 6 chord, and then we have a 4, so we would harmonize that with the diminished, and then the 5th, we harmonize that with the uh, regular 6 chord, goes back to the 4, to the 3, now goes to the two, and now goes to the uh, one. Now notice that this sometimes sounds like an E minor, like an E minor, like the relative minor. So what I do here is I like to use a different inversion of the sixth chord. This time I have the five in the bass the three, the six, and the one on top. I don't always do that. If you play this and you have a bass player hitting the uh, G root, it'll sound fine. So we have so far so I just harmonize it with a uh, D dominant ninth. Then it repeats. There's that uh, other sixth chord. Now, going to the bridge, it starts on the uh, D, the dominant, that's the fifth, we'll harmonize that as a one, that one two, so here 
And instead of going to, we'll go. And then we'll go to an A and to a D sharp five. And here's the whole thing. And here's a little bonus. If you have children, this one won't drive them crazy while you repeat it a million times to learn it. So we'll do. I truly hope this has been useful and you will be able to apply it in your playing. Please keep an eye on my upcoming lessons because I will be posting some chord melody arrangements using the concepts we have discussed here over several jazz standards. As usual, I thank you for your likes and welcome your questions and comments. And if this is your first time on the Jazz Guitar Channel and you enjoyed this lesson, please be sure to subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you will be notified of my upcoming lessons. Until we meet again, practice, 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 and may peace be with you.